For this part in the clock series, we're going to look at how we can take the real time of the day. So basically, as of right now, it's 5.13 p.m. And what I want to do is replicate that into a debug message that prints out on the screen. So in this case, all we're looking at is the real time. So we got a lot of nodes and a lot of explanations behind this in order to understand how we can have it reflect properly on the screen. So to start, what I'm going to do is grab an entity. I'm going to go to Default, Flow Graph. And I'm going to snap it to the middle. Just to note that this is a blank template, so we don't have any substitutions for nodes. Let's go to Create Flow Graph, and we'll call this Real-Time Clock underscore FG. So now that I've created that, I already have Flow Graph here. If you don't have it, what you can do is come down here and click it. So I've docked it, and I'm ready to access Flow Graph. What I want to do now is I want to basically get the real time of my clock. So if I right click and go to Add Node, Time, we can go directly to real time. And you would think, hey, this is all that we needed. Uh, we can just string this out. So let's understand exactly what we can do with this. If I go to HUD, I can see that I have Display Debug Message. If you're on the game SDK, it'll actually be in the debug. So let's go ahead and the hours and the minutes are what we're after. So these are two values, but I want to combine both of them. And I actually want to separate both of them. So to do this, to begin with, let's type in Q concat. And this is for a string, and basically it's going to concatenate it, which means it's going to combine it. So if we go to string 1 and string 2, and then we push out this to show the message, we can turn on the debugging and we'll notice that nothing is happening. And this is because we need to update this. So in that regard, what we can do is come over here to the left to access it a different way, and we can grab the time. So in that regard, let's force the update of the real time, and we can set the string. So now we have something that's at least updating every time. And let's see what's on the screen. So now I have 1716, which reflects the 516 time that I have. This is military time, so just keep that in mind. So let's turn off debugging so we can keep them short. And maybe I want to do something different. Maybe I want to actually add a colon between those. So I'm going to copy and paste my concatenation. And I'm going to add this to this string. And I'm actually going to change the hours to this. I'm going to remove this one. And on string 1, I can add a colon and push this out. And what we actually want to do is show it there. And now we'll see exactly what we're getting in this regard, because this will be setting. So let's make sure we set that as well. If we come back, you'll see that we now have a proper time. So it's 517 or 1717, and this works out perfectly. But there's one thing that you can't see, and that's actually the time as if it were to have a zero. Because in this value, if we turn on the debug, if it's actually set to zero, it will simply have one number. So say I had nine, it would not have zero nine, which wouldn't reflect a proper value. So we have to set up a few more nodes to understand how we can get this. And what we want to do is we want to test something that's within a certain value. In order to do that, I need to go to the math side of things. So I'm going to grab a math node named in range. And if I drag this in, I can think about what is it I want to do with these. So we have a min and max value. And in terms of time, we count between 0 and 60. Technically, we count between you know, 0 and 59. So in this case, we know that all of these numbers that we're going to have to have a 0 on, subtracting with the 0, are all the way up to 9. And then the other numbers that we basically want to show without this is 10 to 59. So now I have my values, and I know exactly what I want to do. 
And let's go ahead and push this in so we can have a value coming in. And then we'll go ahead and we will actually copy and paste our debug message. And what I want to see is if it's true or false, we print. And we have a nice thing to actually do that, and it's called a logic gate. So if I come up, I can go to my logic gate. And you'll notice that it kind of works perfectly for us. We want it to make it where, OK, if it's true, open the gate. And if it's false, close the gate. So we can do that for this one. And we'll go ahead and copy and paste this, and we'll do this for another. In this regard, now we can kind of check these. So what we want to check is, if it's in on those, we're going to check. And if it's out, well, one of them will not work because that's how we have it set up. So I also need to combine both of these numbers. And what I can do for that is I can go to Q, any, and that's logic. And we can basically throw both of these into a logic any node to be able to calculate what it's doing. So one thing I noticed with this is if I have 0 to 9, what did I want to do? Well, that's simple. What I wanted to actually do was I wanted to add a 0, because as it stands right now, it's just calculating the 9. So in order to make that work, I drag over a concatenation, and I basically say, yes, I want 0 there. And 0 is going to exist in between these numbers. So when I go ahead and I set this, with my string, which is minutes, I want to output to a value. So let's kind of clean this up a little bit so we can see exactly what's happening. We'll have to open this any node back up. So now that I have my output from this, I want to connect this to the second string. And then this should be able to print out exactly what I want in regards to numbers. So let's go ahead and look, and we have 1721. And we're going ahead and we say, yes, it's 21. So this right here is false, and it's closed. And you'll notice this one is 21, and it's open. And both of these values are coming in. We can't test it on this specifically, but what it's doing is saying, OK, it's closed. We're not going to add that value. But in this case, it would open if we were going between 0 and 9 to be able to calculate it. So it's a quick overview on how you can set up a proper time within your level. And as you can see, it's very important to keep a decent graph. And then also at the end, I can go add comment box. We'll make this real time clock. And you can do a lot of things with this. It doesn't have to exist solely as a debug message. We can go ahead and push this into a UI function if we wanted to. So far out. There we go. I like to put it to white, as most people know. And there you go. If we go back to our main viewport, you'll see that we have 1722, which my time is 522, and I have an accurate clock that will not only represent the time in between 10 to 59, but once that rolls over to, say, 601 or 602, it would actually reflect as 1802. So I hope you enjoyed this video on doing a real-time clock. And look for other videos on clocks because you can really manipulate values. And not only that, maybe you want to have a timer up or down in your level. And that would be another case in another video that I'll show.